That is hot. Oh shit. Oh shit. Welcome back, you guys. Welcome back to the channel. I got a collab for you guys today between myself and two other nail sisters, and we are going to be bringing you Creepmas in all of 2023. I can't look at my ears, they're going to it. All of 2023. We are going to be bringing you guys cool horror collabs. It's like holidays, monthly, just seasonal, whatever we come up with. Like, a lot of the months. Not every month, but, like, a lot of the months. Are you new here? Welcome. My name is Sierra. I'm just, you know, that person, I guess. Uh, subscribe, like, and comment down below. Do you know who Krampus is? Let's get into this set. This pickle is good. It's good. <laughs> so for December Squad Goals collab, we chose a Merry Creepmas. And for mine, I chose Krampus. If you know who Krampus is, comment down below. Um... My dad's side of the family actually originated from Poland. They immigrated here during the war. My great-grandmother's parents emigrated to America during the war. Now, my great-grandmother actually threatened me with Krampus when I was little. So we're going to get into Krampus, but I want to get into these nails and my nail sisters first. So I did a soak off with the acrylic that was on my nails and the acrylic was really growed out as you can see here on my pinky You can see how much growth there was. There's a tiny bit of acrylic left So when I do soak offs, I leave Just a really thin layer of acrylic on my natural nail to protect it. It doesn't need re Prepped it doesn't need etched it doesn't need nothing if I leave that tiny bit of acrylic that wasn't lifting on there All I need to do is just gently go in push back my cuticles and etch around that natural new growth So I'm not using an e-file I'm just going in and using a curved file from Eno Couture. These are perfect for hand prep now if you want to use an e-file fine, but if you're uncomfortable with an e-file, using a rounded file is really great for natural nail prep, getting up in the cuticle area. So I'm going to do something that you guys have not seen me do in over a year. I'm going to be using poly gel. I'm doing my nails in my house because it is negative 20 degrees outside with the storm and I cannot seem to heat the salon and it is freezing out there. So I'm going to be using 123GO stiletto tips that you get from Enel Couture. These are gel press-ons, and I'm going to be using these and Ohuhu Beauty's poly gel to apply them. I did not want to bother my family with the smell of monomer, so that's why we are doing this method. Now, I make sure that I'm sizing my tips before I go in and get everything ready. And now I'm just using this pumice stick to etch the inside of the press-on. This makes sure that I get really good adhesion with the poly gel. I know that the 123 Go nails are pre-etched because they are very matte looking and not clear, but I'm just doing it because I don't trust it. I want to make sure that they are etched really well and that adhesion is perfect. Now here is our royal blue and silver flake. This is a foil flake, so if you've ever had chameleon flakes or the holographic iridescent flakes, this is like those, but it is completely opaque and it is like a royal blue. No holographic whatsoever. You can get it on this site, criminalclaws.com, January 1st when we open. So, after etching the inside of the press-ons, I'm going to go in with some base gel and this is what I am going to use to apply the flake. Now I'm going in and filling in the tip with the base gel because I'm going to be doing an ombre. And what I'm going to do is I'm using the base gel to apply the foil, right? And then I'm going to apply the foil, scraping it up where the nail bed would be. And when I get a nice looking ombre, I'm going to go in and I'm going to cure that foil flake in place. And then once I have the foil flake in place, I can either apply it right then with the poly gel or go ahead and fill in all the other tips with the flake and then apply it that way, applying them all at once. Now I apply this pinky right away and I decided after applying it that it would be a lot easier just to fill in all the tips at once with the glitter and then apply them to the nails all at once in the lamp. So a tip with glitter ombres is that you want the tip to be completely opaque with glitter. You want it to be thick with glitter, but then as it gets up near your nail bed, you want it to go to really tiny pieces. You want your glitter to start fading upward into the nothingness of your natural nail. 
So I just start getting the foil into the tiniest pieces as it is fading up. I have big pieces down near the tip and then tinier and tinier pieces up near the nail bed. Now, Ohuhu Beauty's poly gel is really thick. It's one of the best poly gels that I've actually ever used. It is seriously really thick and I like that because poly gel, if it is thin, it starts to actually flow all over your nails if you are sculpting it onto a, neck, a tip. Like say I was to just glue on a tip and start actually sculpting out with poly gel. Um, soft poly gels like Beatles and other brands that are soft, it will actually start to flow and they don't just stay in one spot. Ohu Beauties actually stays in one spot. When you put it there, it stays there. So I really love that. But when I say that I was struggling with this, oh my god. I haven't used poly gel in forever and I hate how sticky and messy it is. So, all right, when you are applying full cover tips, you need to make sure that you dehydrate your nail bed, clean them of all the dust. Okay, clean your nail beds with alcohol of dust. Make sure you clean them. Make sure that they turn chalky white. You want them completely dehydrated. And then you are going to go in with base gel. Now, if you want to use primer, sure, go ahead. But with poly gel, in all the poly gels that I've ever applied, it never once says that you need primer. Okay, just base gel. So we are going to dehydrate our nails, apply base gel, do not cure. That is our slip layer. This is what is going to help the poly gel slide up the nail and fill that tip flawlessly. Not like I'm doing right here because I put too much poly gel inside the tip and literally it just started squeezing out the sides. So now I'm going in with the brush and alcohol and cleaning up what I can. Now this is what I hate about poly gel. I keep cleaning and cleaning and cleaning with the brush and it literally still shines. Like if my hand, finger was clean, it wouldn't be shiny, but yet it's still shiny and sticky because the poly gel just, oh my God, it's just so thick. I, I really struggle with poly gel. So after the disaster of the pinky nail, I decide that since I've already applied the pinky nail, that it would be a lot of work to sit there, apply the glitter, cure it, then apply, put, put, put the blah, 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 Sierra, talk correctly, blah. Okay, so I decide that it would be easier instead of doing the glitter, curing, and then applying poly gel and trying to do that, that it would just be easier to fill all the tips with the glitter, cure it in place, and then apply the tips with the poly gel. So I'm just working with certain products at one time instead of having to work with a bunch of products and keep switching back and forth. So just make sure that you're curing your glitter once you apply it inside the press on because if you don't cure that glitter in place with your you, it's going to slide on you when you apply the poly gel inside the tip if it is not cured in place it will slide don't forget that all right let's get into the squad goals collab all right so let's get into my two favoriteest bestest butt heads right we got sweet tea nails and nail addict shea and we are going to talk about nail addict shea first so this girl already has like a 25 days of Christmas nail art on her channel. She literally, before Christmas even happened, before December, she had content on her channel like two to three times a week. She's got new videos two to three times a week. She literally is just this overachiever that I can't stand with the sweetest voice. And like, no, she has a personality to match. When I say like she is the sweetest, kindest person, like if you listen to her voice, you're going to hear it. And if you get to know her, you're going to know it. So Sheena has like two to three videos a week out on a regular. But for Christmas, she decided to do like 25 days of Christmas sets. And when I say she does a set every day on her channel, like I get tired of going to some of the people that I would. I've subscribed to on YouTube and like I will look on YouTube for something to watch and nobody has uploaded anything new. I've already watched everything everybody has. But then I click on Sheena and literally she has like two to three videos. Every time I'm on YouTube, she has like two to three new videos up. You guys are going to love her. And oh my God, when I say like she really like explores with nail art and does all different things. She does poly gel, acrylic. She does press-ons. She does it all on her channel. I just love her. You guys got to go check her out. That is Sheena. 
Nail Addict Shay on YouTube and Instagram. So I'm going to leave her links down in the description box. Go show her some love. She is the sweetest person. You are going to love her. I want my besties to be besties. So go check her out. So you saw me apply the pinky with the poly gel, and I guess I lost the footage of applying the rest of the nails with the poly gel, but you could see the thumb here where it squeezed out all over the place. After I'm done applying them with poly gel, I go ahead and wipe them all down with some alcohol, and then I go in under the free edge where there is that foil flake exposed, and I'm going in with some base gel and just covering that up so that nothing gets damaged and it feels nice and smooth. After this, we're gonna go in, we're gonna do some filing and shaping, getting up in that cuticle area, making sure we get all that gel out of the cuticle area, blend it in, make it look nice and smooth. And then I'm actually gonna go in and restructure these with poly gel. You're gonna get to see me sculpt over these nails and encapsulate more glitter. So definitely watch and see what's gonna go on. I will come back to you with that. Now let's get to Tessa. All right, and then now, like the biggest, my biggest butthead of all, my biggest, bestest butthead of all, Tessa from Sweet Tea Nails. When I say this girl is a comedian and so funny, she has dry humor like me. Like when I say that she is just so cool, so quirky, so funny, like, and it shows in her videos. If you get to know her, you are going to see it. She is seriously hilarious. I love her nail art. Her nail art is so fun and funky. It is so cool. She does the coolest shit. And then like, I have to compete with that. Oh, hell no. Like, I'm not even going to try. And then she, like, talks shit to me. She comes for me and my nail art. Like, I remember one time I did a video, and it was, like, all hand-drawn nail art. And her ass wasn't happy. She, I can't make her happy. She's always like, Sierra, you didn't even try. I know what you could do. You could have done more. Like, listen, Tessa, I'm, I'm glad that you believe in me. But let me be lazy every once in a while, okay? Like, stop calling me out. <laughs> yeah stop it <laughs> but I love her and she seriously pushes me to do so much more and be so much more and do so many greater things than what I would do like I love having friends that push you to be the best you that you could be because that is Tessa she really doesn't care what people think she is going to tell you how she feels she's going to tell you what she thinks and she just she does the best that she can by everybody she is such a great friend she is really a great confidant like, I trust her with everything. Tessa is a great person. Please go check her out. You are going to love everything that she does. And she sells custom press-ons. Seriously? She sells her nail art. So go check her out. All of her links are down in the description box. Please go show her some love because I want my besties to be besties. So go check her out. So, okay. After pile driving through all of that gel that I squeezed up into my cuticles because I suck at poly gel application, especially with these tips. I probably should have just sculpted. I would have done better. Um, but it's okay because with a file, all things are possible. So I went in, broke that skin barrier where the skin was attached to the gel with the file, got it all up away from that gel and then I'm going in and using an e-file just to do a lot of blending and shaping, making sure everything is really blended into that natural nail. Up in that cuticle area, you guys know I will preach this and preach this and preach this. That shit's got to be smooth. You got to be ready for that grow out. If you do not blend in your extension or enhancement with your natural nail up in that cuticle area, if you have it up under, if your gel is squeezed up under your cuticle and you just leave it like that, get a week, two weeks down the road and you are going to look crazy wearing that set. So make sure that you get up under there. Now I'm going in with my jackhammer of a bit. This is a cuticle bit. This is a ceramic cuticle bit, needle nose bit. And I'm just getting up under that cuticle area, making sure that there is no poly gel left and making sure that everything looks super smooth and just perfection. Mwah, chef's kiss. 
So after I blend in the cuticle area and I do the shaping, making sure that no poly gel squeezed out on the sidewalls, making sure that everything is filed up into shape, I'm going over the full cover press-ons with a buffing block, making sure that I etch them because we are going to encapsulate some stuff with poly gel and I need to make sure that that poly gel adheres and sticks and grabs into the top of these press-ons. So then after I file, I go in with some alcohol and a nail brush and I scrub at these nails, making sure that I'm cleaning up in that cuticle area, getting all the dust off and making sure that we have a clean base for our next application. So here's what the nails look like now. Everything's nice and pretty. Here is the glitter that we are going to encapsulate. This is moons and stars and sunbursts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with our rubber base gel and I am going to be applying a very thin layer of that onto these press-ons. Now, do not cure because you are going to place your glitter, the suns and moons and stars and everything. You're going to place that into this uncured base gel and you're going to place them strategically where you think they are going to look best and then you are going to cure them into place before you actually encapsulate everything with the poly gel. So, all right, do you guys know who Krampus is? Did you guys get to hear about him as a child or did you find out about him as an adult? So... My family is mean. Um, we are of German descent. A lot of my family hails from Poland. Um, we migrated, emigrated here during the war. And yeah, my grandmother slept with money in her mattress for a long time. She never trusted the banks. Uh, my great, great grandparents went through the Great Depression. Um, yeah, we have a lot of family history. So... I knew about Krampus as a child. I was told that if I was good, Santa Claus would bring me gifts and presents and all that good stuff. And if I was a bad child for the year, that Krampus would come and he would either kidnap me, eat me, or just switch me. Like, I grew up having to go outside and pick switches. Do you know what a switch is? Have you ever had to pick one to get whipped with? Because the first one is never good enough. I always had to go for like the, f the second or third one. By the third one, finally I could get my legs switched. Alright, so here is the thumb right now. This is what it looks like. This is how thin it is. And this is the other nails already encapsulated. Look at that beautiful apex. They are so pretty. Now I don't know if I would call these a stiletto at this point. They are kind of like a pointy almond. But I'm loving the look, especially with that apex. They really look pretty. So we're going to go ahead and we are actually going to encapsulate this thumb together. So I'm applying the Ohuhu Beauty Poly Gel and I'm going to apply a little glob of that. Not little, it's probably about a frozen pea size glob onto the thumb. And then I'm going to use my silicone tool to flat end. I'm going to dunk it into alcohol so that nothing sticks to it and actually use that as my applicator. I just kind of flatten out and sculpt the poly gel where I feel like it needs, where it needs it. And definitely using it to encapsulate that, that glitter. Um, I don't want that glitter coming through the poly gel. I want to make sure that everything stays where it stays where I put it. I want it to be seen fully. I don't want to file through it and I don't want it sticking out through the poly gel. Don't want it being lumpy and bumpy. So I'm making sure that I, I shape these to the best that I can. I think I did a really good job. The silicone tool was great. I just had to keep dunking it in alcohol. So I honestly can't tell you where Krampus came from. I tried to look it up, but I don't think anybody really knows. So some people say that he is demonic or the satanic form of Santa Claus. Uh, why would you celebrate that though? Because in Germany and Austria, Hungary, um, they actually had Krampus festivals where people would dress up, men would dress up and have these ugly faces on trying to scare people. Uh, I know there's a movie out of Krampus and it's like this evil snowman that eats kids and people and stuff. 
Um, Krampus is a lot of things. I honestly think he's just folklore, especially for Germany because, you know, they're just evil people. No, I'm lying. Germans are not evil. I love my family. I think that the reason that I am so tall and Amazonian looking and built and why I have such big hands and fingers, like I've thought about this. You know how Germany did experiments on people wanting to like have strong and um, healthy people and like they wanted their men to be like super soldiers or whatever. I always wondered if like maybe my family long ago was experimented on and that like somehow they escaped or they just got let go and through genetics because you should have seen my great grandmother when I'm saying like this woman was every bit of 6'3 and very big. I'm not saying fat. Like she was just big. She was a big bodied woman. Taking care of her when she was on her deathbed was hard. Rolling her over, giving her baths. I was definitely there helping take care of my great grandmother. I loved her very much. She was the one that taught me how to read, how to write. She was just there for me when I was little. Um, and I really loved her and appreciated her. And she remembers the old, the old, um, the old world, or however she would put it. I forget how she would put it, but she, she was just an amazing person. And I just wonder with as tall and wide girthed as she is being, um, partially German descent, if maybe our family was like experimented on or something, like it's just not normal. My mom is not this tall and big. And like a lot of other women on my mom's side are not nearly like, they're all like five, four to five, six. I am 5'8", and that's not that tall, but it's taller than most women. I look down on most women. Very few women are as tall or taller than me, so I don't know. But, all right, so back to Krampus, right? So Krampus is like, like there is different facets of Krampus. So you have the evil guy that comes around, but then you have like this evil snowman. That's what I chose to do for the set was the evil snowman like this gingerbread man that was evil um the snowman like kills people and eats them so I was just taking tiny white beads of acrylic applying them I used black for his hat and then brown for his arms and now I go in with gel polish creating his features and stuff um yeah just going in and doing everything that I can to make him look kind of realistic and scary. So I'm sorry that it's blurry. It will get better. Um, and I hope you guys like this. I'm going to let you guys go. I love you. I've been talking a lot. I'm losing my voice. I'm very sick. Uh, I can't, I had to go to work the other night and work in 13 degree weather and my pants, the bottom of my pants and my socks inside my shoes got wet. So I like, I worked like at least six hours of the night. I worked 12 hour shifts, but I worked six hours of the night soaking wet in 13 degree weather and it just kind of got me sick. So I hope you guys couldn't tell through most of the video that my voice is very messed up and that I am stuffy, but if you could tell, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys like it. I hope you stick around for the nail art. I love you. Please like this video. Please subscribe if you're new here. And please comment down below. What do you know about Krampus? Because everything that I searched up, honestly, it just all was maybe it came from this or maybe it came from that. Where do you think it came from? Because honestly, I just think it came from people trying to scare little kids throughout time. I don't believe that he came any earlier than St. Nicholas. And, you know, I feel like with any one thing, there needs to be balance. So if there's a good Christmas thing, there needs to be a bad Christmas thing. And that's what Krampus is to balance out, you know, that naughty list and that nice list. So talk to me down in the comments. We'll get into it further. Let me know what you guys think. All right. I love you. Bye.